Hi, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of a quick analysis on assessing the correlations between SPDR gold price and Hang Seng Index next day percentage change. This technique can be applied to the other stocks. Feel free to skip any parts to suit your needs. Let's begin. Okay, what we did last time was getting two stocks at once. Hit the top right corner and you can revisit the video. Here we get SPDR Gold and HSI from Jan 1986 all the way to this moment. Then Import Pandas and Pandas Data Reader. These are the codes. Shift Enter to run the code. And now I can load up to the stock data. Then here I'm going to store it in a table called DF Data Frame. The web here is from the Pandas Data Reader. The dot data reader method is to read stock info where are defined here. The list contains two stocks. Of course, you can insert more than that. I'm not going to do it here. Then it uses Yahoo because I'm getting data from Yahoo Finance. Start day, which is defined about and also end day. I usually use df.tail, which means getting the latest five days. Press shift enter, run it. Make sure the data is loaded once to Google Collab. If you're not using Collab, let's say you use Sublime, you might need to save it to a CSV file externally. But here in Collab, you don't need it. You can also save to Google Drive, but I don't prefer. After getting the stock data, you'll see the column Adjusted Close and Close Rate. I usually keep Adjusted Close, but not Close. Here you'll see, I use df.drop to drop the original close column. Inside the bracket, I use in place equals true, which means permanently remove the close column. Now I want to rename the adjusted column to close, usually load it once, and then you will see the close column disappears. Only adjusted close remains, right? Then I'll rename adjusted close. Here you'll see, rename bracket inside the bracket what's inside is just how I rename the column from adjust the close which is inside the single quote and this color means changing to close the method is axis equals one changing columns instead of rows if axis is zero by default it's zero changing rows here we are changing columns not row so axis equals 1. In place equals true means the change is permanent. Alright. Shift enter. Then I'll see adjust the close becomes close now. When you look closer, August 1st for gold has no figures, but HSI does have values. That's why you see NAN. I want to get rid of the NANs, which don't have any values. So df dot drop na, then print it out again. Df dot tail shift enter. Here you see August first row disappears. As long as the row has any n, which means no value will be removed. That's all what we did last time. Let's dive into today's tasks. Firstly, I need to know the next trade day by how much HSI is going up or down and a correlation with another factor. The term factors are simply the table columns. Of course, we can always add new columns from our last video, high, low, close, and next days up and down percentage have very low correlations. Now we need to calculate the next days up and down percentage. Here you see end day change equals one. That means the number of days you look ahead Instead of one day ahead, you can put 10 or 5 days. This can be used in codes below. Here you can see I first calculate the current day's percentage change using current close price in comparison with the previous days. Let's say SBDR goal, we want to know the percentage up or down on July 31st from July 30th. 133.21 minus 134.97 and then divided by 134.97 you should see negative 1.311297% here I apply 
to go close price a method called percentage change just like this one if you won't put in any numbers inside the bracket like one or two by default it means the percentage change from previous day you expect to see 0, 0.0 something i'll just multiply 100 to it the same can be applied to the percentage change of hsi that's why i only change this to hsi take a look here Control slash and then shift enter take a look here df and then go day change let me show you the last five days shift enter then you'll see negative 1.31 percent which is here 133.21 minus 134.97 then over 134.97 but we are not interested in today's change. We want to know tomorrow's change. So I go here. I just give it a name, DF, which is my table. Inside a single quote is the column name. GLD end day change. It means end day after. And the end day is 1. So GLD end day change is simply here. GLD or HSI's current day change shifting down to the next day. That's why here in this column, shifting a positive number of days means going to previous days, which is not what we want. I don't need last day, but tomorrow's percentage change rate. That's why shift a negative end day where we defined earlier here. End day equals one. Similarly, do the same to HSI. See if I'm right. DF and then a square bracket inside it. Add one more square bracket inside that bracket. I put in column one, comma, column two, comma, and so on. What I'm showing here is today's percentage change GRD day change, which we did earlier, HSI day change, and GRD end day change tomorrow, and HSI end day change tomorrow. I don't need to print it all here, just use dot tail the last five days shift enter you see nan here on july 31st because it's not august 1st yet simply say grd current day change is negative 1.31 percent build it from july 30th the previous day the end day change which is july 31st is negative 1.31 percent this applies to the whole column now I want to use the GLD's end value, that's just the price fluctuation of gold price. If you want to go deep on how I calculate the end value, you can watch the previous video up top. I'm not going to repeat too much here. Now I use GLD's end value to compare with HSI's next day change, which is this one. HSI end day change column to access their correlations. I now calculate the end value first, df which is my table, create a new column, this column is gold stay high minus last day's close. Gold stay high is simply the GLD column under the high column here. It minus gold's close from the previous day, just call it B range, it's simply the high column of gold minus previous day close which is the gold column inside close gld here i use dot shift i need a positive number because when you look back i use the dot shift method a negative shift means looking ahead a positive shift means shifting backwards by default the shift is positive one but i prefer to put one here just to remind myself because sometimes when you have multiple shifts it can be confusing remember when calculating price fluctuations always take the absolute value by wrapping with abs bracket this number no matter if it's positive or negative will become positive that's goes current high minus previous close and i add a column called c range it's similar to B range. The only difference is low instead of high. 
goals low today minus previous close. Then calculate goals high low today. Just call it a range. A range is today's high minus today's low. It must be positive, but I prefer to keep the ABS bracket high minus low. You don't need to shift because it's today. After that, I usually print it out like this one. Just give it a name, table, target. target la. This table is simply DF, which is the data table about. Dot look, and then the pattern is rows, comma, columns. We need all the rows, right? So we use colon to represent. For columns, I don't need to include all columns. I only pick some of them. So I add a square bracket inside that. Fit the column names. The columns I need are HSI's day change tomorrow, HSI and day change, which we defined early on. Then I'll compare it to the A range. Let me add comments here. GLD, which is goals ATR average true range. I'll add one more column below. This one is true, true range. range. Just come back. ADR is df.look. Row and column inside rate. Then dot max. Axis equals one. Apply to the columns. For rows, we need all the rows and so for columns. Include from A range to C range. Let me see if it works. B range. C range. A range. Shift enter. Yep. Let's check it once. ADR is the maximum of B range, C range, and A range. 1.2799 is more than 1.19 and 0.89. Good. I usually skim through the data, check if it works. This true range takes an average. It can be 20 day moving average, 14 day moving average is totally up to you. I just pick 20 day moving average about a month of time, 23 days. This is the end value. The column is being added here so that we can compare with HSI's end day change. DF's ATR, which was defined earlier. Inside that, apply a rolling method. Equals 20 or 14 days, 5 days, 2 days, or whatever. 20 days and dot min. Here I'm including the column to table target. Shift enter. Our main goal is to get this column and this one. Let me add a new table called compare. This is simply df.load. It's purely for display. Feel free to skip any steps if you like, provided you know what you're doing. I only need end value and HSI end date change. Shift enter. This is what we want. Then import pandas profiling as PPF. PBF is defined here. Profile report. Inside the bracket, fill in the argument, the table, compare. This one, shift enter. Then it will compile a report to compare the two columns. Let me see. Oh, we missed 0.2% of all records. It doesn't matter, it's just a small fraction of a total of several thousands. Oops, we have about 3000 records. This thing count only 3500. See here, correlations, Pearson. You can see HSI day change, which is the percentage change next day. Of course, its relationship with itself is 100%. That's why it shows deep red. Because they are the same group of data, but HSI's end day change to goal end value is a very light blue. It's close to zero. 
If it shows deep blue, it means when gold fluctuation increases, HSI's next day will go down. Just go the opposite way if it's blue, but it isn't. It's light blue. You can say they're not correlated. This is what the Pearson method concludes. Spearman also draws similar conclusions. They're both light blue. They don't seem correlated. This column, gold price 20 day and value. When comparing to HSI, don't seem very much related. That means we have to look for another factor. Of course, it can't be done shortly. We basically keep searching the column that has high correlations with our target column, which is the HSI's next day change. That's a simple analysis. Hope it helps. Thank you.